can tell me. I can tell you the first record I bought. Back, I... back when I was about 11, one of my teachers brought to school a, a, a disc of Negro spirituals. Mm -hmm. And I liked that so much, I went up to the local record store, who of course didn't have it because they wouldn't have had something like that, and I actually ordered it. The silly fool brought it in, even though I hadn't paid for it. And then I had to go and get my father to give me the five bucks or whatever it was for the album. But I love that album. Word of mouth. The fact is, I listened to that once, and I was sold. I wanted my copy. Mm -hmm. Now, would I have made a copy from my teachers if he'd let me and I had the means? Maybe. Because at that time, I didn't have the money to buy it. But in all likelihood, I would have bought a copy at some point in the future because... I still have that record. It's in my in my box of boxes and boxes of records. And yes, I will buy one of these MP3, you know, network turntables and and rip a lot more of my stuff. I I ripped a few. At one point, I borrowed a turntable from somebody, but I've still got all these records. And I, some of them I've gone out and I bought the CDs to replace them. I think the first record I bought was an LP with Doris Day on the front cover in a fish tail <laughs> dress. I met Doris Day later on, and she's saying, Que sera, sera, que sera, sera. whatever yes. will be, will be. The future's, and that's one of my theme songs, right? <laughs> whatever will be, will be. Yeah. So what, we're, mine to what we're dealing with today sera, is sera, a sera. way of finding the be, music that be. you want to listen but to. But I got another one, too. Just for the record, because you talked, I got reborn into a little bit of music. I had never liked the Beatles. I was not a Beatles fan in 1963, 64, yeah. when the Beatles came and were Ed Sullivan, and I was in the music business. I was in Winnipeg and produced. She came in through the bathroom window. Well, no. Uh, the kids, <laughs> two years ago, October 2007, the kids took me to see a, a, a oh, movie called universe. Across the yes. Universe. And Richard, I watched that movie 12. I bought a legal copy. I watched that movie 12, 13, 14 times. It is times. a wonderful movie. It's actually been on TV. And it's got enough yep. Beatles music in it. It's got the history of where it came yep. out. And I actually played uh, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. And I would never... And Jane, I mean, it cost me $7,000 by the time <laughs> we were finished because we ended up with Jane's bedroom decorated in a Beatles theme with a one wall <laughs> yellow. No, not just for the for the... But that was a piece, that was a movie that the music, which was Beatles music, which I'd heard yep. for 40 years, 43 years. It clicked. Uh, clicked because there was a story behind the music. Yeah. You know, Prudence was Mia Farrell's sister yes. and stuff like this that yes. I had never heard before. Dear Prudence. And, we, and the kids took me to a movie last night, too, uh, for Cheap Tuesday Movies Night. And we've yep. been to a movie most of like, the last four Tuesdays, right? Yep. Three Tuesdays. And we went and saw Back, oh, Daylighters? Uh, Daybreak. 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 I, I, when I got down there and I discovered that I had gone to see a vampire movie, <laughs> I was, I mean, and I'd seen the runner or the trailer for yep. this thing a couple of times, and I'd made a vow, this is one movie I'm not going to go and see. It was wonderful. I loved it. <laughs> it somehow or other made vampires fun, and especially since they changed back to humans. But that's so what, the story. what we're talking about is how Spoiler. we how <laughs> we find sample examples of the things that we like in life. We used to find them based on word of mouth and going and looking for them and maybe having them occasionally put in front of us by radio. Okay, if we listen to rock and roll or whatever particular CHQM FM's gone. I, the only people that I get that play classical music today is CBC Radio 2. CHQM FM's gone. I used to love listening to that stuff, and I bought some of the records. You know, go down to Sikora's. No, well, CFUN's gone too. CFUN's gone too. But where am I going to learn about the music? Then you know. And uh, where am I going to hear the back catalogs? No, you talk about Sakura's music. I know who Sakura is. Ray Sakura. Yes. Then you know whose brother he is. Yes. Then yes. my starter wife Gloria That's is married right, to. That's married to his Les brother. Sakura. Les Sakura. Les Sakura. And yes. uh, talk about a funny, funny, funny. It's a small world, isn't it? Well, it is a small world. Vancouver is pretty small sometimes. Well, you just go around in circles. So.
where am I going to be able to, to listen to some of the back catalogs of some of the, of the musicians that the, the publishers aren't putting it out there? Yeah. Where am I going to find the, the, the music that I like? Where am I going to learn about musicology? I'm See, I, you know, Richard, for all due respect, I've known you since, I think, uh, you didn't October know 1985. And I've been all sorts of places with this guy. We've had some wild <laughs> car rides and so on. Oh, God. <laughs> um, I've been out for lunch with him, and I can count in 10 pe on both hands the number of people I've been for lunch with in tw 30 years. Um, we've been for lunch several times. We've been for dinner. We've had a couple of we've, parties and we've so on. We've gone for wings and and never, and never once, not once until this moment have I known that you were a music fan of any sort. You know, it doesn't show, and I don't play a musical instrument anymore. I used to sing really well, but I don't anymore. Well, I sang, in the, I sang in the Winnipeg Music Festival But I Winnipeg. started playing guitar. The Happy Wanderer. I used to go I, wandering I could have been a rock star. The... <laughs> and you know why well, I guy... wasn't? Why? Because my father made me take music lessons from a guy who would only teach me on a classical guitar and didn't well, all the guys like I, rock. All the guys I hung around with in Winnipeg are all rocks. They all came, turned out to be rock stars. Well... No. I could have been a rock star. No. I used to know all, all the Stones, uh, you know, we did Stones covers. I don't get, no. That was my theme music in 1965. I, I, I found if Gloria happens a to watch notebook. that, you'll remember why. I found a little brown notebook from my teenage years wherein I had carved all of the words from all of the Rolling Stones records. Really? We didn't buy the music. I just transcribed. I don't even remember. Listening. Was Gloria one of the Rolling Stones oh, songs? Yes. So I thought Gloria and I don't get no satisfaction. Yep. Were the 1964 fall That's of 64. Right. That's right. Because I was married to Gloria, and I can still remember we'd had a big fight, and she was driving through <laughs> the streets of Winnipeg. I was driving an Imperial convertible, white Imperial convertible, and she was driving a white Cadillac convertible, and we were mad at each other. And I was on the radio as I'm driving, chasing Gloria's, is I don't get no satisfaction, and then the next one was Gloria. <laughs> I mean, I can, I can remember these happening. Yes. And she would remember, too. We had a coffee yes. house at 127 Provence in, in uh, Winnipeg in St. Boniface. And Mitchell, you'll remember, I showed when we went to Louis Riel's grave, I pointed out the corner where the, where the coffee house was. Yep. And just down the road was City Hall, St. Boniface City Hall. And somehow or other, um, on the walkway up to the city hall, where Joe Gay was the mayor, um, somebody planted marijuana plants both up both sides of the sidewalk, and there were these you lovely, sure, you lovely. Sure they weren't uh, wasn't tomato me. plants. No, they were marijuana plants. It was so funny because they were looking really lush and green, and so on, growing at the side of the walkway up to the. Anyway. They did get caught and got cut down. So. <laughs> and it wasn't me. It wasn't me, but it was, uh, I remember, because this is 64. Yep. And, yep. Uh, okay, I can guarantee it wasn't me, because the reason I got out of the music business was because of drugs. I couldn't stand marijuana. I couldn't stand the bennies and stuff that people were. Bennies, man. What bennies oh. compared to the stuff now? Bennies and quaaludes and uppers and yep. downers and 